Can you see how many people are on? Uh, yep, so it, show, it shows me how many people are on. Yep. Hey guys, we're getting a Facebook Live started here um, in just a minute. We're giving everyone a chance to um, get onto the video. So just hang tight a minute or two. So you have a lot of bars also have it pulled up here and was looking at it. It freaked me out. Oh yeah. I can see you. Yep, yeah, there you are. You just disappeared. Oh, oh yeah, I kind of went out of it. <laughs> Oh, yeah. So they're not just having to awkwardly right. look at me. <laughs> oh, man, that was quick. We already have eight people up there. How many? You're a superstar. <laughs> Usually it takes a minute to get people in. Oh, look at that. We're already up to 12. Okay, once we get a few more people in here, we'll just get rolling. Yeah. Lisa Brandon says hello. Hello. We've got Jackie and Chuck Hensel in. Good. Jason, can you hear us all right? Jason Everett. Yep, he's in. As usual. All right, I think we're going to get started. Hey guys, welcome to this week's Facebook Live broadcast. Um, today we have CEO John Wilbur talking about some exciting stuff. Um, if you are driving right now, please come back and visit our page later um, as we'll have this posted up for you guys. All right, let's go over to John here. All right, John, you're on. Thank you. Appreciate it, Brittany. And uh, Brittany will be giving me any of your questions uh, uh, during the during the event, so feel free to shoot those in at any time. First of all, I just want to say hello, welcome. This is my first Facebook Live of 2019, I think. We were trying to figure out that before going on camera, but I think it's my first time of 2019. So uh, really great to be here. And again, thanks for everybody, for everything you guys do, particularly this time of year. Um, just really want to say I hope everybody is safe and warm. Um, we've had snow out here in the foothills in Arizona, let alone all the major issues we're having in the Midwest, Upper Midwest, East, and uh, all, all the people we have in Canada right now. So it's a pretty uh, pretty tough winter weather-wise so far. Uh, so mainly just make sure you're safe, stay warm, and uh, it's not lost on us how difficult a job it is, particularly this time of year. So I really appreciate everything you guys are do, uh, that you're doing. Um, I always like to start out with uh, what's near and dear to your heart and ours, which is our, our freight outlook. Uh, I know some of you've heard me talk. Uh, we do expect 2019 to be a, a very good year. Um, it, it probably won't be as robust as 2018 in terms of our, our price increases. Uh, we had quite a few price increases last year, as did the entire industry. We, are, we have uh, price increases in place for this year, not to the same extent. But volume-wise, in terms of how much how much freight is out there and uh, how many loads for us, uh, we feel it's going to be another very strong year on top of the best year we ever had, which was 2018. If I break it down into you know commercial and, and military, starting with the DoD, um, I, I, you've heard me talk before that we're in a fit, we're in a government fiscal year right now, which ends in September of 19 that for the first time, the DOD's budget was approved for the entire fiscal year before the year started. That hasn't happened in a decade. So you, you heard all the stuff about the government shutdown and everything that did not affect the Department of Defense. And the budget is up about 10% from where it was last year. That doesn't always translate into 10% more uh, loads of the type we do, but it should be a very robust year uh, on, on the DOD side for us. Uh, some of our competitors are, have a little bit more capacity, so there could be a little bit more price competition than there was last year, but you know, we're in the lead in terms of market share, and uh, we're, just doing, we're doing a great job with the military, and I expect to, to have an excellent year with our uh, government friends uh, this year. Commercial, we have continued to add commercial freight. You know, uh, we're, we're kind of known as being an ammo carrier, uh, but we're, we do almost 70% of our loads are high value commercial loads. So that's why I always talk about how important it is for our owner operators in particular to haul all of our freight because 
uh, the backbone of our freight network is our commercial business. Uh, pretty much across the board, we expect a strong, whether it's our hazardous waste, which we have two new big customers this year, Stericycle and US Ecology, um, commercial, uh, commercial explosives, also expect to be strong. Uh, in the winter, obviously, it's that sector slows down because they're serving the mining industry. As, as you know, we do a lot of uh, explosive moves out of ports, particularly La Bay up in Quebec. It's gonna be a, probably have another 20 ships this year. I think we were 18 to 20 last year, and in many of those ships, we're doing 100% of the loads. So that will continue. Uh, a lot of our UPS business just, we think everything on the commercial side is going to be as good or better load volume wise than it was as it was last year and we've added new new customers so overall on the freight side uh should be very strong year uh this is the worst weather year we've had in three or four years so that certainly will affect uh, load count and, and our revenue for this period of time we hope it warms up here pretty soon but uh Anyway, on the military side, you also know that's a seasonal business. Uh, you know, their high season is kind of May through September. Uh, so that ramp will still occur. But uh, again, as the weather warms up, our, our freight will continue to warm up. We started the year in January. We had an excellent January. We were ahead of budget at all levels. So we expect to come out of the gate real strong for the year and continue. Brittany, I, I think we've got a question, so. Yeah, so Juliana asks, are we going to have more solo freight this year? We, um, we are going to have more solo freight, and particularly out west, um, we actually built a, a solo fleet, a western-based dedicated solo fleet. I don't know how many trucks we have running in it right now. Most of that moving hazardous waste, but yes. And then we have probably be doing some more uh, UPS business that some of that's gonna be solo, uh, solo freight. So I do think we will have uh, more solo freight this year than we did last year. Uh, Jason Matthews wants to know, can we get into the aerospace industry like NASA? Well, I'm just waiting for a Facebook event where Jason doesn't ask me a question. Jason, how you doing? Thanks for the question. Um, we are uh, chasing down opportunities in the aerospace business. We have been engaged, not with necessarily NASA, but with Boeing uh, significantly. Uh, we're not doing a lot with Boeing. They haven't necessarily liked our prices. Uh, a couple of our sister companies, particularly one, does a lot of business with Boeing. Uh, there's Northrop Grumman. So yeah, we are always, uh, aerospace is, is on our radar to, to chase down and we have been chasing it for years. We do a little bit of it now. Uh, again, NASA's, there's not a lot of freight there. So it's gonna be more with the uh, aerospace contractors where we're gonna get business, Lockheed, Raytheon, Boeing, Northrop Grumman, uh, along those lines. So thanks for the question, appreciate it. Um, so that's really what I what I have on on the freight. Nothing significantly new, other than we expect this to be another strong year, particularly once we get through the uh, uh, the winter. And we've done a great job of continuing to add high value commercial accounts. And the one thing we've always done well is get more lanes from our existing customers. That's been our number one source of growth. And that's really because of you guys. Because when we get a customer and we start out with a lane or two, we serve them so well and, and, and deploy so much capacity to them that we continue to get um, more lanes and more business. I, you've heard me talk about, particularly our owner operators, heard me talk for years, capacity wins the game. Obviously when I say capacity, I mean capacity that serves, that, that, that does it well, and that's what we do. Did you have another question, Brittany, or are you good? Okay. Um, moving from freight, I want to talk about our drivers. Um, again, thank you for everything you guys do. We really appreciate it. Um, first on our company drivers, congratulations to those company drivers who've been with us for a year by either uh, last in January last month or this month in February. We started this great program where we pay a, a bonus out uh, every on their anniversary month. And we've been paying out based on their miles they ran for the whole year. And I think we've had 15 to 25 drivers 
uh, each of these first two months receive bonus checks in the amounts between four and seven thousand miles and when we're talking a team that's each team member getting a bonus based on their their miles for the previous 12 years so it's working out great uh, so far two months into it and every driver that's with us company driver that's been with us a year will will see that bonus as they reach their anniversary month so we're real excited about getting that kicked off and so far out of the gate it's uh, it's it's going well um, with regard to our owner operators um, I've always been very transparent with our performance um, and you know I know there's always a lot of rumors out there and this and, and I get you know you guys will call me or text me and I always answer you very directly with what uh, in terms of how we do so I'm gonna share some of this because I know there's been a lot of numbers floating around and um, I'm just, we've never been bashful about sharing our numbers because we know they're better than anybody else that we compete with by far, frankly, in most cases. Just to give you uh, how our fleet is performed in terms of revenue per truck. And the numbers I'm gonna give you are your revenue for the truck after the company's 30% split, okay? Two or three, uh, I think it was three years ago, our top 30 uh, trucks all were up at, 320,000 or above. That's kind of where we were about three years ago, okay? Um, and our, our top truck may have hit 400 or just under 400,000. Again, that's revenue to the truck after the company split. Here are the numbers for 2018. We had our top 50 trucks in our owner operator fleet. Our top 50 trucks all were over 400,000. We had some over 500,000. Again, that's after the company split. There's nobody else producing those numbers in our industry anywhere close to it, okay? And there were more than 50 over 500. I'm just saying the top 50 were all over $400,000 for the year in revenue to their truck. Now, people always say, well, you know, how, how do you get there and what are the characteristics of those top 50? First of all, the top 50 a lot of times switch every year, but uh, the characteristics that were common were the ones at the top ran the most days. Just simple as that. They were out the most and that was their decision. Uh, and they accepted the most loads. I'm gonna be very frank, I've said it a, a million times, the, the trucks that keep moving on the freight, freight they're tendered are the ones typically at the top. And yes, there's, there's a, certainly a lot of the flatbed teams are in that number, but they're not all. And the flatbed, you know, typically pays more, pays higher, but there's more work associated with a lot of those loads on the tarping and strapping. So anyway, that's the bottom line. The facts are we have our top 50 trucks all did over $400,000 last year. Now, those are all business partners of ours. They still have to run their business well to have money in the bank at the end of the day. Like any business, if I told you what our revenue was for the company, which I've done in the past, that doesn't mean we were profitable because it's how well you run your business. So, uh, but it's a lot easier to have money to store in the kitty it, you know, the higher your revenue is. So it was, we've never had numbers like that. We expect to have them again this year. Um, that's, they were just tremendous. And again, thank you guys for what you did to, to get those to get those numbers. Um, and it's not all about the whole 50. Our fleet, entire fleet, uh, had just performed extremely well last year, sp particularly when you're talking about comparing it to previous years. It was tremendous. The freight environment was strong, and you guys performed under that strength. So, yes, Brittany. Uh, Holly Quinn wants to know, when is the lease program going to open up again? Great question. It's, um, well, technically, it's, it's always open. It's a matter of, I, I know what your question is, you know, when can I get in? Um, it's just something we kind of manage on the fly. We have to balance out. Your, your question, just to make sure everybody understands, is we have a lease program where we allow company drivers after they've been with us so long and they've got all the credentials uh, and they're a team to lease effectively rent a truck from us convert to an owner operator status and they can keep that truck for six months and then get their own or they can keep that truck for long term and we have teams that do both so that's the program that she's referring to in the question um, 
we typically keep just a certain amount of teams in that program because those are tr our trucks that we're using and we need to make sure we have enough to run our company fleet. So I don't have a, uh, a matter of days or a matter of weeks that I can give to you. We constantly look at that and we know that the people that are on that waiting list, and if you've been told that you're, you know, you're approved for the program, we just don't have a slot, you're in line, I get that. I also understand it can be frustrating. We do expect, particularly as the freight starts to heat up here soon, that we'll be pushing more teams into that program over the next 60 to 90 days. That's not a specific answer for you, but um, we will be growing it this year. But again, we just have to balance it with the equipment we have, making sure that the company fleet still has the amount of trucks they need. So, um, you know, a little bit of a vague answer, uh, just because that is, that is the answer. We don't, I don't have a real specific timeline. Uh, we constantly look at that and we are very aware that the people that are in that line really wanna get into it. So uh, I hear you. Um, I'm gonna move on to a, another topic, uh, which I've been updating you, everybody for, for years now is on our facilities. A couple of things are new there. Our Legacy Lodge, uh, for those of you who've been there, is open. Uh, it was start, it's been open for a few months. It's been a great success. Still tweaking some things. And we do have a lot, we're still doing work because the weather hit us on the outside. You'll see some really cool stuff, not only just the parking lot, but we've got a fire pit and some other things and some grass and trees and stuff going out in front of the lodge. Uh, so it'll be completely done here in another probably 30, 30 or 60 days. drivers in there if you're in the area you're certainly welcome to attend uh, but it's not the kind of thing during on a Thursday midweek we can you know shuttle a bunch of uh, uh, trucks in there and, and drop customer freight to do so so I just wanted to you, you should hear about it later but uh, that is a date that is set in stone Thursday April 18th uh, at the Legacy Lodge in, in Joplin it's gonna be hopefully we're gonna get some of our friends from SDDC potentially including the commanding general to come out for that, which would be really, uh, really nice. Um, and a lot of our sister Dasky companies and some of the uh, folks from corporate Dasky will also be there. Yes, Brittany. Uh, Blake Warren wants to know, will we ever open up a terminal in, Salt, in the Salt Lake area since we move so much freight in and out? Uh, absolutely, yes. Um, I can't tell you when, it's on the map. We absolutely will open up a terminal in Salt Lake. And the reason is, it's our highest density location that we have. We've got shippers and receivers there. Uh, we just, we go through Salt Lake a lot, as all of you know. We operate with a yard there and a couple of locals. Uh, we actually made an offer on an existing facility uh, uh, at the end of last year, we didn't get it. Um, so it, it's, it's, uh, it could happen real quick if an opportunity comes up. And uh, let me tell you what our actual priorities are right now. We're gonna finish the, the Legacy Lodge, as I said, some of the outdoor work. Um, uh, the Crane, we're doing a new facility in Crane. Um, that's in planning stages right now. We're working with the city and the county out there. Hopefully we'll be uh, under construction here sometime soon this year in Crane. Uh, but then Salt Lake is probably next. Uh, we may be doing some things up in New York, but uh, yes, Salt Lake is absolutely in our plans. I don't have it scheduled yet, but if something became available that was existing that we could buy or lease, we'd probably just jump on it. And we're, we are looking at that market right now constantly, so yes. Are we looking at upgrading any of our current yards? We are looking at upgrading um, anywhere where we have a facility, yes. So uh, bluegrass, Crane, need something in Salt Lake. We, we'd like to get something better set up in New York. We're looking at that. In terms of yards, um, I, 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 I probably need some examples of, of what you were talking about if you have them. Um, so they brought up East Camden and yeah. Crane. 
Crane, absolutely. Brand new terminal will, will be coming to Crane. Uh, if any of you have been to Loudoun, Tennessee, our facility there, it's going to look very similar to that. It will be laid out kind of like uh, like bluegrass is, but you know, pretty much everything will be new. So uh, blue, uh, bluegrass crane for sure. Camden, I, I'm not sure what we're going to do in Camden. I know, I think we're, we, we, uh, you know, we had Tri-State's yard, we had R&R's yard, and I believe we're just using one of them now. Um, and I, I don't know exactly what our plans are uh, for Camden, so I, I, I don't have a specific answer for it. But we do look at every facility, and if you guys see something that doesn't look right to you, should be upgraded, should be dealt with, let us know. I mean, I'm, I want all of our facilities up to just, you know, the highest standard over, over time. I absolutely want that. Yes. Uh, Lisa McDonald brought up the Plattsburgh location. Yeah. Um, we are uh, looking for a different solution in Plattsburgh. We may be partnering with one of our customers up there. Uh, we're in discussions on that now. Um, there's a, you know, obviously we have Champlain, we have the safe haven in Plattsburgh, and uh, we may end up in a new uh, location in Plattsburgh that is better than either one of those. So uh, stay tuned on Plattsburgh and New York for sure. I, I yeah, stay tuned. Um, that's really kind of where we are on the facilities. I really appreciate the uh, Salt Lake question. That is something that's been on our radar for years. We've never gotten to it. We got real close to a deal out there last year. Uh, so we will we absolutely have something in Salt Lake. It'd be great if we could get that done this year. We wouldn't, if we did, it wouldn't be something we built. It'd be something we it was already existing and, and we leased. So uh, the other thing too, if anybody sees things in these markets that you think we should look at, shoot us a note. We'll look at it for sure. Um, Couple of things, uh, one thing we need some help on and another uh, thing I wanna let you know a problem that surfaced that we're, we're dealing with. Um, in terms of what we're, we need help, I think a lot of you or all of you may have recently received a notice, uh, I don't know if it was Qualcomm or how we sent it out, that we've had some drivers take their bills of lading and put them in drop boxes and not take the picture, scan them and send them into us. And we don't get paid for that bill if we don't get that that uh, picture of that bill of lading scanned and sent to us. So just make sure you're you know scanning and sending in all the uh, uh, all the bills of lading, but particularly before you put it in the Dropbox. Very important. I know you got a message on that, but it just directly affects our billing and our revenue and our cash. So that's something we want to correct. Um, another issue we're working on. Um, it's actually brought to my attention by Rose Bates, longtime owner operator for us. Hopefully you're on the, on the event here, Rose. Thank you for doing that. And it was really a, a, an issue that happens, I know, more than it should. I think at times there's responsibility both on our operations group and on drivers to make sure this doesn't happen. But it's something that, uh, and the, the, the issue is this, and Rose, I, I know it, it's not only happened to her, it's happened to her more than once, but also others where Maybe they're coming out of home time. They've been told to go pick up a trailer at a certain location, specific trailer, and then go to a shipper and you know grab a load. And by the time they get to that lot to pick up the trailer, somebody else has come and grabbed it, and it's gone. And then their whole plan's jacked up. Um, we we know that's an issue. We know it's happening. We think we not we know why it's happening. So um, we're probably going to be coming out with some just changes in procedures, possibly on our end, but also reaching out to all the drivers to reinforce what we need you to do uh, on your end, which certainly would include don't pick up a trailer without being dispatched on that trailer or communicating with operations that you are doing so. That's where things definitely get messed up when empty trailers get picked up and we don't know that that's, uh, that's the plan. Because if, if, if somebody's been planned with that trailer and somebody else you know, tells us they're gonna grab it, we have a, alerts will come off and there'll be an error and we'll, we'll get it figured out. But if they just grab it and run, we, that's where we run into problems. So uh, again, thanks Rose for uh, bringing that certainly to my attention. I know it's, like I say, it's happened to others and it's been brought to our attention before, but we're kind of focused on making sure we really deal with that. So when you guys go somewhere to, and you've been told to go pick up a trailer, that that trailer is there and it's reserved for you and it's ready to go. So uh, appreciate that. I'm pretty much, I think, through with everything that I had. Um, I, 
I really appreciate it. I'll answer one more question, but before we go off again, I just want to really thank everybody for continuing to stick with us and work with us and do what you do every day. Um, you guys have the hardest job in America, or one of them, I think, and our job is not to forget it. So thank you. Can't say it enough. Brittany. Uh, David Ransom wants to know, will there be a weekly guarantee pay for solo drivers? Uh, great question. Um, and it, it wouldn't be a weekly guarantee. It would be the daily rate, I think, is really what you're asking, uh, which is what our team drivers have. We, we refer to it in weekly uh, amounts at times, but it's a daily rate. I don't know. We have gone back and forth on that. We've experimented with it. Uh, we certainly, it's not that, uh, you know, it's the hours of service element that, that makes it a little more complicated with our solo drivers. So I, I, I don't know. It's something we continually evaluate. Uh, what I will tell you is we, you know, we have expecta expectations for what our solo drivers should make. And we you know, definitely want you to make good money. This is more about the best way to compensate you. Uh, you know, so I don't know if we're going to go to the daily the daily rate uh, or maybe even if you were referencing a weekly minimum base. So I don't know, but what we do, what I will tell you is we watch your compensation every single week, and uh, your compensation and your benefits, you know, need to be top tier and they need to meet your expectations. So um, I don't know if we're going to go that route or not, but it's something that we do look at all the time. Thanks for the question. Appreciate everybody. Again, uh, thank you. Stay safe. Stay warm. Uh, continue to stay warm because I don't think we're getting out of this uh, freezer here for a while, including here in not-so-sunny Arizona. It's been pouring rain on us for a couple days and snowing in the